Hey, it's Mateo from Prophecy Chocolate and just sitting in a little beautiful circle, sipping some cacao with some friends and want to share a little bit of what was coming through. And we were sitting and kind of setting some intention about giving thanks for cacao and the lands that it grows in and the people that work with it and all the mountains and the guardians and the lands where it grows. And in that moment, I was holding this cacao and kind of lifting it up and blowing on it, give thanks to these, to, you know, all that makes it possible to have chocolate in my cup and cacao beans that we're able to import from Peru. And I was thinking as I was hold, holding it in my hand, I'm like, you know, I believe that there's consciousness in the plants and in the animals and even in the mountains and the stones and the rocks and the water, everything is kind of imbued with some sort of consciousness. So. I was thinking instead of, you know, just a drink, just a drink, uh -huh, what if I was holding like a really actually conscious, aware being in, in, my, in my hand and uh, being open to what that being is feeling, how that being is receptive or not to become part of my being and whatever that really is in that multidimensional reality of who we are, who I am. And so I was just kind of open, like, okay, cacao that's now outside my body. Um, what, how are we doing? Like, how's the relationship between humanity and cacao? And then um, bringing it into the, my being, the cacao had a few things to share. So one thing that came up was that cacao is so very pleased and happy at this relationship between humanity and cacao. And cacao told me that out of all the beings of the forest, all the jaguars and the sloths and the ants and the birds, out of all the beings in the forest, it took a being like humanity, like man and woman, to have the ingenuity to create a chocolate drink, to grind the seeds of this beautiful plant to grind its seeds into a drink that could be shared and enjoyed and brought into the hearts and the beings of all the people because the bananas and the oranges and the mangoes and the ginger and the turmeric those are beautiful amazing plants too but all the animals of the forest could enjoy those you know and the cacao is certainly enjoyed by the birds and the monkeys and all, a lot of animals rodents that'll come through and, and eat the cacao pod. But the cacao is so happy that it took the ingenuity of humanity to be able to t take what it provided with the benefit of the Mother Earth and the rains and the Creator for bringing its life into being. And humanity was able to take that gift and turn it into something new and different that brought it all around the world and touched the hearts of everyone. I don't know how many people there are in the world that's never had cacao. I'm sure there's some people out there, but I don't think I've ever met anyone like that. So first of all, cacao is like, wow, it's so amazing that this relationship that has been formed and is continuing to form. And then cacao shared with me that its energy is upright. And so I was thinking about that. Okay, how am I sitting? Am I sitting upright like a strong tree? And I thought of the cacao trees that grow in the wild. How do they grow in the wild? They grow in the shade and they grow really tall and really straight. So you could be walking through the forest where there's like these really tall canopy trees covering the jungle and below them you have the cacao and the cacao, maybe these canopy trees are 150, 200 feet tall. The cacao in the shade grows straight up, like without any side branches, straight up. So strong, so straight, so tall. And it can grow like 60 feet, maybe taller, 60, 70 feet high. So straight and so direct in its energy. And then there's a couple fruits but they're not like the simple fruit that you just reach off and pick off. They're really high up. So it's really hard to actually harvest cacao. 
in the wild and it doesn't produce that much. So as part of this ingenuity, humankind has taken the cacao from the jungle and brought it into our home, our lands of our farms and our backyards in certain places and our front yards in other places and you know maybe some parcels of land in Peru like the chakra and they brought the cacao, we brought the cacao and started planting it. So cacao is really happy about that and then cacao told me but there's this weird thing I'm feeling this energy of like really strong straight uprightness with the cacao and then I'm seeing in my mind these visions of these cacao fields and they're all grafted and pruned and they're cut so what used to be a cacao tree that was straight up is now a cacao tree that grows straight up for like two feet and then we cut it and force it to go into like three or four branches and so there's then there's like four trunks that are then now producing all the cacao pods down close to the ground and cacao is like okay that's maybe not my natural way but now I'm in, I'm, I'm being interwoven with humanity. But I had in my eye this vision of, okay, maybe you want to have a whole field. Maybe you want to have cacao, maybe ideally with some other plants, you know, other, of, other plant relatives of cacao and a whole diverse ecosystem. But if you want to grow a lot of cacao, at least have one cacao plant that's allowed to grow up straight without ever pruning it, without ever touching it. Maybe you can harvest the fruits, but have one cacao plant that's allowed to grow into its full self. And so this all reminds me about ourselves, you know, and how are we treating ourselves? And cacao is a really nice reflection on that as well. So I feel like I've had the blessing to see some cacao trees in the wild and see some cacao trees that have been planted on farms that tend them as if they were wild. So instead of planting the seed, the cacao seeds, almost all the cacao trees today that are grown all around the world, they take the cacao seed, they put it into a plastic bag with soil and they let it grow for a while and then they cut it and they take a shoot from another cacao tree that they cut and they graft it, they fuse them together and then they wrap it in some plastic and they let those grow together. By grafting it, the plant's going to be smaller and you're going to only get the cacao fruits from that shoot that you planted on the top, that you grafted upon the top. So I feel like such a blessing to be able to drink cacao from lots of different sources, including grafted cacao, but the best cacao for me is the heirloom cacao, the cacao that's maybe been planted like they used to do, which is you take a stick you poke it in the ground and you put three or four seeds in the ground and you cover it up and then you keep walking and you do the same thing and those cacao trees never once been moved, never once been cut or grafted or messed with and those cacao trees are allowed to grow their full selves in that one place. And so I've seen some cacao trees maybe like 80, 100 years old, big trunks still producing tons of cacao and you look up into the canopy and it's just abundant with beautiful fruit that's hard to reach, but it makes the reach and this fruit and the cacao just all that much sweeter. So that's what I want to share today, a little bit about cacao. And thank you for joining us and let me know your thoughts. Have you ever seen a cacao tree in the wild? Have you ever seen a cultivated cacao tree? What do you think about cacao? in your cup. Is it conscious? Is it alive? What can we learn from cacao? Cheers. Salud. Mm.